Hi everyone and welcome to Tap Into Your Creativity. Today in my studio, which I'm not in my studio actually, I'm gonna have Tim McFarlane join us. I'm so excited for him to join us today. He's a non-objective abstract contemporary artist and I, um, I'm here in San Diego actually. I flew in two days ago to see my parents and, um, and my daughter and my family and I'm so excited to be here in California, beautiful California. Um, I am quarantining myself in this beautiful rental space. So if you don't recognize uh, the back, <laughs> the back uh, it drop, it's because um, I'm not in my space. And Tim is going to join us uh, any minute now to talk about his incredible work. And there he is. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Welcome, Tim. How are Hi, you? How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I'm so excited that you are part of my army of artists, um, <laughs> and uh, I can't I can't describe how um, fortunate I am to have met you. I consider you now my friend, uh, <laughs> and it's just been an incredible relationship. That it's been, I, I know that it's just going to continue to flourish and. It's nice to know that I have a friend in Philly and that you have a friend in me in Minneapolis. Um, exactly. So thank you so much for being here today with us. And You're welcome. Um, I can't wait for you to tell us everything that you want to say about you, you and your art. But before we do that, I just want to say um, thank you to everyone that has contributed to this incredible project uh, that um, I started, but now. I feel like I have a community of artists, a community of people supporting this incredible project. And uh, together we have made over $14,000 for Feeding America, which I guess is the equivalent of 42,000 meals, which is unbelievable. And I'm just so, I feel so proud of our artist community that we have all come together um, as one to help. And it is so important right now that um, it's not about us, but it's about um, a community at large. And so I thank you for being um, one of my army of artists. This is oh, thank you. I'm glad, to, glad to be here. Yes. <laughs> can so, you hear me okay? Sorry? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can okay. hear you fine. Can you hear Good. me okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, I actually... Um, you know, I flew in on Monday night. I'm in San Diego. I uh, came to visit my parents, which I haven't seen since the pandemia started. And I'm quarantining myself in this beautiful rental space. So that's why if people see my back around and they don't recognize it because there's not a painting of mine. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that is why. So anyways, um, Tim, please tell us... Um, your full name and where are you from and a little bit of your background. Yeah, sure. Uh, so my full name is Tim McFarlane, just two names, no middle name. Um, and I grew up and currently live in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, I did all my schooling here uh, all the way through college. I graduated from um, Temple University in uh, 1994, uh, studio art program uh, on the main campus. Um, and I started actually being involved in art when I was uh, in high school. Um, that's when I started being more heavily involved, I should say, you know. Um, my, my first recollection of like doing something of my own goes back to when I was about, I think I was probably like six or seven or something like that, um, where I found a cardboard box in my, um, my mom's like drawer and uh, I cut it up and made this little cardboard like man out of it, you know, sort of like man shaped <laughs> kind of. But that was my first, that's my first conscious memory of like having something and being like, oh, I did this, you know, so. Um, and as a kid growing up here, you know, I'm an only child also. So um, I spent a lot of time 
basically inventing my own little worlds a lot of the time. Um, I read a lot of comic books. Um, I went through a phase where I was like trying to draw comic characters a lot and things of, of that nature. Yeah. Uh, and, and, then, <laughs> and then when I got to high school um, and in the, in the 11th grade, that's when it really started like coming together, together for me that I wanted to um, do something with art. So you've really always had it in you somehow. Did your parents, were your parents involved in the arts or did they, no? Nope. They, did they encourage you to keep going? Um, so my, my, my father passed when I was uh, uh, 15. Um, I'm sorry. And, and my mom, that's okay, that's okay. And, um, but my mom, she was supportive. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, she had her own little issues or whatever, but um, but yeah, you know, she supported me doing whatever made me happy, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's really great. Yeah. And you probably had a very tight relationship since you were the only child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what happens when you finish high school or when, what, during high school? All right. So, well, well, during high school, basically, I, I look at that as a point where I started my formal education in art, um, and it, and my love of color began there too because my high school art teacher was uh, was a fan of like impressionism, so um, he was always showing us, you know, um, different ways that people work. Like Cezanne, Cezanne was one of his favorite artists, and also happens to be one of my favorites as well. Uh, how they put the put color together. Um, so yeah, Suzanne, uh, uh, Monet, and also old master work as well. You know, I'm a fan of Caravaggio, um, and you know, amongst others as well. So um, at the high school, I um, I went to Temple University. Um, I didn't know exactly what I was doing, so I just kind of like went, you know, went in undecided, or whatever. Um, and then I had some money issues, so I I left. I dropped out for about five years, and then I went back in uh, 1991. Um, and the only thing I, during that time that I was out of school as well, I kept making art. And, you know, I realized that's the only thing I really wanted to work at. So when I went back to school in 91, um, I went back for, you know, for an art program there. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think it's fascinating that, you know, you, you waited those five years. And, you know, no matter what, I think it's, if it's in your heart, um, if you're a, an artist that wants to create, you know, you can give yourself breaks and it doesn't really matter because you're going to keep creating. Yeah, exactly. Keep, right? You're, yeah, yeah. you're always going to keep creating and be doing. Right. And so the fact that you actually went back to school, it's fascinating to me that after five years, you thought, you know, I'm going to go back. What, yeah, why, yeah. what made you decide that? Well, I mean, that was always, the goal was always to go back, even when I dropped out. You know, I said, well, you know, I have to do this now, but I do want to go back. So that was number one. Um, and the fact that I kept making my art, and that was the, that was the thing that kept, um, that kept me going, pretty much, you know, over that time. Um, and I really had a love of it at that point. So I, I figured, you know, why not? Right. Um, and so uh, basically what I was doing over the five years, in, in, in addition to making the art, I was looking for a way that I could get back to school, but also have a job, you know, to support myself. So, um, so I had a job and I got into this, um, you know, situation where uh, I was able to go back to school at, at first part time. And then I was able to go back full time, even with a job. And, um, and that's what sustained me through, you know, through college as well. It was just... So I had to juggle a lot, but you know, I got I got it done. <laughs> so let me ask you something. Um, what was your style at that point? What what were you doing? Were you more three well, D or were you on paper canvas? What was your? Well, I mean, before I went back to school, during the five years, I was still um, doing a lot of like still life landscape uh, painting and oils. I will go out and actually do landscape paintings. You know, I will go out uh, like behind Philadelphia's Art Museum or Kelly Drive here um, and, you know, do uh, landscape paintings. Um, I would set up still lifes in wherever I was living at the time. I moved around a lot during that time as well. Um, so so that, that, that was that. But when, when I went back to school, 
Um, I started training, you know, more figuratively and everything. Just like I had to, you know, get the basics down while I was in school, get through my foundation courses and everything. But along the way, um, in addition to that, like during the five years also, so there's a lot of back and forth here. So um, during the five years also, I started, um, you know, experimenting with more abstract things in addition to the um, landscape. The landscape, yeah, the more realist work that I was doing. So when I got back to school, um, I kind of felt like I, I definitely wanted to pursue something that went beyond um, what you could see directly in front of you. Um, but I felt like I had a good foundation in everything. So um, as I went along to my higher, my upper classes, you know, as a junior and a senior, you know, I got to uh, experiment a lot more and. And that's when I really started going into more non-objective um, abstract work. Yeah, I mean, I think that maybe all your your life has informed you to where you are right now mm -hmm. in your work. Obviously, you know, we use that almost as a dictionary, right? To kind right. of go back and just, you know, refer to, oh, you know, in that time, what was I doing? And then you move forward and you learn and, and it's a trial and error kind of thing and it kind of you move forward. Because right now your artwork is uh, non-objective, but you have your own language and you communicate mm -hmm. your own language. And now you're doing installations and you're doing prints and you're doing, I think you're, you're you can please talk to us about all the things that you're doing right now. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm doing well, a lot of let's go back to when the pandemia started. Right, right. right. Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, so, so yeah, when the when the when the pandemic started and uh, the lockdowns began um, back in March here in Philadelphia, anyway, it was back in March, and uh, so I was uh, laid off from work, you know, because my job was considered not essential. Um, so I had all this time, and I knew like as soon as they announced it, I had been biting at, I had been like hoping for some opening because. Um, I was just ready to like start working, you know, a lot more than I was, was able right. to at the time, you know, with right. work. So yeah, uh, as soon as the, as soon as they announced that we couldn't, you know, the store couldn't be open, I was, I came home and I was just like, okay, you know, and I just like, I just started working, you know, uh, that's all I did for, you know, the whole time pretty much, you know, <laughs> um, and it was, it was a, it was, it was, you know, it was like someone, some people have said, have said it was more like, uh, um, what was it? Artists, artists at home, artists in residence. It was something about, I forgot what it was, but, you know, but that's, it was almost like a, you know, an artist residency almost, you know. I think that's what it is. Artists yeah. at home, artists at residence. Or yeah, something. yeah. 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 It was something like that. Yeah. Um, so, um, so yeah, so that happened and, um, and before the pandemic, uh, before the lockdowns happened, um, there have been a couple of projects that had popped up for me, opportunities um, that were in the works already. So, um, the, you know, everything started slowly reopening, um, the job reopened, and I realized um, with the time that I was going to have to devote to that, I wasn't going to have enough time for these opportunities to, that came up. Uh, so, and, and something else had come up during the pandemic too. So I was trying to figure out how am I going to juggle all this? And, um, the only, the only logical way for me to figure it out was to, um, leave the job. Um, I had to make that leap because, um, if I didn't, then, um, things probably wouldn't have panned out the way they have in terms of my, uh, my art, art life at this point. I'm very proud that you did that. Not everyone can do that, you know. No, it's <laughs> it's it's I, you know, I mean it's it's still like it's it's going to be very tricky still, but um but yeah, I, I almost I had no I felt like I had no other way to go because even though I consider myself, you know, I am officially I guess a full-time artist now. I've always considered myself. Yes. <laughs> I've always considered myself a full-time artist. You know, um, even even when I was you know working day jobs throughout my you know my entire life since I was uh, thirteen, um, I always like art was at the forefront of um, you know of everything. So um, that was. So I guess at this point, you know, by the time I got to this point, 
uh, I guess it was just, you know, the right time. Um, and the titles for your paintings right now, have mm -hmm. they changed um, because of what we're living and the, you know, the, all the unsettlement and everything that's happening right now? Um, I don't know. To be honest with my titles, I'm just looking around right now. Um, I mean, a lot of stuff that I have with me, I haven't even titled yet. But no, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I can't really... There are some things in the back of my mind, you know what I mean? But I haven't made that work yet. Yeah. Um, in general, like in general, my practice is that I don't, you know, I don't, um, I, I do the work and then titles and stuff come later. And that's still the case. Um, you know, there's still some like little ideas bubbling in my mind, but I don't have a, I, I can't say I have a direct response to everything right now, art wise. Um, well, you told me yesterday that you walk on the streets and you right. inform yourself right. of what's happening, right? Right. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Um, so a lot of my work um, has been influenced largely by what I see in the streets. And what I mean by that is um, what I see in terms of um, uh, humans interacting with their environment and the spaces around them. Um, so, you know, things like graffiti, uh, things that, you know, you look around, you see the, the, uh, the remnants of, you know, human life everywhere. You see trash, you see, um, all sorts of like things that are that, uh, combinations of things in the streets, like, you know, clothing and all sorts of things that, um, that remind you of, you know, like that you're living in a living, breathing, um, environment you know like people's lives are impacting uh the environment around them and, and now um, more than ever right yeah 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 definitely um and so another part of that is what i also call um the anonymous art making that's in that's out in the world you know so um and which is a direct reflection which some of my work is a direct reflection of right now um, in terms of um, someone, you know, throwing up a tag or graffitiing somewhere, and then the, then that being buffed out, um, posters being repasted up, and then someone tagging over that, or uh, things being torn down. So in spaces, there winds up being all these like disparate histories um, coming together in this one space, and you don't know like who did what necessarily, but there's like different like stories being told that are intermingling there. Um, and you don't quite know exactly, you know, what's being said or whatever, you know, you just, you're just seeing the, the aftermath of. Or what came first or what, what came, you know, you right. just, there's no rhyme or reason. And exactly. There's that, no rhyme or reason. Right. right. Yeah. You can't really tell because like things have been like, you know, like I said, you know, things have been torn down or, you know, covered over in different spots. And so, um, there's there's all this evidence of you know everything going on around us and you just might not you know know exactly who did it or what and i think also your installations as we're talking mm -hmm. um you know you, you're bringing that exactly into your installations mm -hmm. because yeah. um you know you don't know which which um for face came first right so right. because you put so much into it that um there's an organized chaos, I guess. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so there's a lot of back and forth. There's a lot of, um, when I make my work, I don't have like a sketch or anything like that. You know, um, I'll look at a space. If I'm doing an installation, you know, I'll look at the space, I get to try to get a feeling for, you know, uh, what's, you know, what's there, what the environment's like, and then um, what I might want to do with it because every every space is different. Yeah. Um, some, you know, some spaces have been flattened and other ones have, you know, had uh, recesses in them that I had to sort of figure out how to, how to deal with. Um, the latest one that I just did at Towson University, that one was a three-dimensional wall that I had to um, organize, you know, and it was pretty big, too. Right, right. So um, can we just make a little pause here and understand what we're living in right now and the violence? that we're living in and how are you affected by this and what can people do you think to make this better you know this world better yeah um yeah it's, it's a tough one i mean 
you know, I, I think first we have to look after ourselves and, um, and, and just try to be patient with one another. Um, and try to understand that, like, you know, a lot of people are hurting. Uh, a lot of people um, don't know, a lot of people don't know where they're going to be living the next day, you know what I mean? Because of how things have been, man how this, you know, pandemic has been managed by, you know, the federal government here. Um, things are, are really kind of scary, you know? Um, so, yeah, I, you know, they're, they're just, I, I just feel like there just needs to be like a lot of patience on, you know, with people and, um, and, and understanding that, um, you know, that this reality that we're seeing is a result of like years and years and years of, um, of aggression, you know, of um, unchecked, like inhumanity. Um, and, you know, there are a lot of people who are just now coming to, you know, coming to understand like what's been going on, even, you know, um, because there's the, you know, everybody, everything's like out there in the open. Um, and I, I just feel like, you know, there's a, there's a lot of education that needs to happen. Um, and I, I just think that it, we just need to, um, we need to exercise, you know, our rights to vote. <laughs> um, and, um, and, 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 but, but as well, look out for ourselves and our, you know, those around us, um, near or far, uh, and just try to, try to be informed, but, you know, try not to get too caught up in the madness that's on social media and everywhere. You know, I, I try to take a, you know, I, I have to take breaks from, you know, everything. I, I try to take stuff. I try to be informed, but I try not to get into looking at comments anywhere uh, too much about different, you know, different things because, um, you know, it's, it's very triggering, you know, uh, the trauma that's going around and, um, we just need to take care of our, you know, well-being. And I think that, you know, there's a huge responsibility for all of us to work on this together, to learn, to listen, to understand what's happening. Right. And to really, really learn. This is the time to learn and to, you know, to take action in the right way, you right. know, and, and hold each other, you know, yeah. instead of putting each other down, we need to hold right. each other up. Right and give each other opportunities and to help each other out and right. not go out in the streets and and riot that's not a you know that's just not a good way of showing you well, know I, I i i might have to take issue uh, I, I think that um you know the destruction of property is bad you know i don't i don't condone it myself but at the same time you know um what is, you know, what is a storefront, you know, put up against, you know, human lives, you know what I mean? That are being snuffed out unnecessarily, you know, um, that's, that's where, that's where you're at, you know what I mean? And people have been, you know, especially black people in this country, you know, they have been, you know, put into like, you know, a box, you know, you like from the time you're born, you, you know, like everything is, um, your life is almost circumscribed by, you know, uh, white supremacy, pretty much. You know what I mean? That needs like to change as, and change today. Yeah, as little Yesterday. kids. Yesterday. Yeah, as little kids, you know, like we have to, you know, we, we have to, our parents have to always have to give us the talk about, you know, how, how to be, yeah, how to, how to act and everything around you know, um, certain authority figures, you know, like the police and whatnot, you know, so from the very beginning, you know, you're like, you're, you're put into this area um, of life. And it takes a lot to like to, to be able to extract yourself and to be able to expand your, you know, your horizons a bit, you know, and, and that's, you know, that whole, and it affects everybody differently, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, you know, a life versus a storefront. Yeah, I'm, I'm going with the life. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't like I say I don't I don't always I don't necessarily agree with it. And but you know the other thing about what's been going on also has been that, you know, there I really feel there's been a lot of government um, interference here. You know, I mean I think there's been a lot of, um, you know, infiltration of move of you know the BLM movement. 
Um, and I think there have been government agents coming in and, you know, starting some of this stuff, you know what I mean, in terms of like burning, burning police cars and other things, you know. I think um, we just need to really understand each other and have this communication open and right, learn right. from each other. And like I said, hold hands and just mm -hmm. walk together side by side. No one is better than anyone. We're right, all the right. same. We're all human beings. We're all coming from, the, you know, from right. a womb. And it's just what we do with our lives and how we live our lives. Right. And as long as you can live your life with respect and respect no matter who you are, from where you come from, what color you're in, what religion you are, it doesn't matter. And that's art is something that it's universal. And it's a universal language that we have. Right. And through art, we can really, really express so much of what we have. Oh, yeah. Have absolutely. Inside and to really, you know, go out there and just, you know, create and inspire people and, um, yeah. and you know, have almost like in, an encyclopedia for in 10 years, come back and see what's been going on. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, uh, that's one of the things that, you know, when, um, you know, there have been situations before, I remember, you know, at, uh, when 9-11 happened, you know, I was, I had, I had a studio and, um, you know, I like, I didn't know what to do in that moment, you know, as an artist, you know, uh, it took me like, a, I don't know, probably like a week or two to like, figure out like, you know, what do I do, you know what I mean? And um, this time around, you know, after, you know, like the killings of George Floyd um, and all the other things that have happened, I, you know, I felt like I feel like you know it's it's just part of my part of my duty as an artist to continue making work, um, and to you know to to bring things to people, um, whether you know whether it's directly connected to what's going on or not. You know I think it's important that we as artists, you know, continue to uh, to be a light in the world. One hundred percent. Yeah. One, like you know, my parents always said like. You're born, you know, you're born with nothing, but right. you're giving a name, right? And mm -hmm. when you die, the only thing that you'll have is your name. So right. it's what you do with your name through your life that right. will impact others. Right. So, you know, we got to make sure that we do it in the right way and we impact our communities and others and be a good human being, you know, and then you're doing your part. So. Right. Um, I'm excited to show your work, Tim. So can yeah, you yeah. please show us around what you have um, in store yeah. for us? Yeah, sure. So um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the phone off the, um, the tripod, tripod here. Okay, yeah. perfect. <laughs> yes. And your studio is at your home, correct? Yeah, it's in my apartment. So yeah, um, I, have, um, I have a room here. This is uh, I'm gonna show everybody. <laughs> this used to be a bedroom. I love the blue tape. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Look at that. Oh my, you really can cram stuff there. So no yeah. issues when you have a small space. Okay, let's let's start with the good thing right now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, okay, Tim, you know how much I love your work. So can you tell us what your language is? Um, you mean in terms of you know, like the, the forms and stuff that yeah, I'm Yeah, the formation that you, it's a repeated formation yeah. that you have. Yeah, so um, so all of these, I call them glyphs. And um, it's something that I started working with when I was um, probably, uh, probably back in the like the late, the late, yeah, late 90s or so, or early 2000s, like really late 90s. Um, I had this idea of using uh, text in my work, but I didn't want people reading the paintings. So oh. I started uh, making these, you know, these little, what I call, I call them glyphs. Um, they, they're not based on letters or anything. They are all spontaneously made as I go along. So I'll make a row and then I'll come down to, to the next space and then go over again. So, um, so it's more or less like I'll start here and then I'll come down here and then go this way and then I'll come down and go that way. Um, and uh, and they, I usually and from the beginning I've always uh, grouped them in in grid like forms, so they almost look like you know they could be passages of writing or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but they're not. 
Um, so they have something, you know, they're, they're, they're definitely um, con uh, connected to communication. Um, I, I like to think of, I, I, I sort of like to think of them as, um, as something that someone might look back on years from now and like try to figure out like if it had any specific meaning or something like somewhat like how we might look at ancient writing or or hieroglyphs or you know yeah i was actually going to say they look almost like hieroglyphs and also it feels very urban to me it feels mm -hmm. like an urban life style mm -hmm. like you're walking on the streets and you do see the graffiti and you right. you know how people um, go over the graffitis over and over again and it, I just right. feel like this is kind of like what you're creating here except it's in your in your studio yeah um, what, you, what I was talking about before about how you know a lot of my work now is definitely influenced by you know street art what I see out there um, I, I, you know, I, I'm not a graffiti artist. I'm not a tiger or anything, and I don't lay claim to any sort of, you know, street art cred. But um, I do like a lot of what I see, and it's obviously, you know, made its way into my work. Yeah, um, yeah. Let's move to the one on your right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So these are both uh, actually everything that you're seeing, except for one of these, is uh, they're in progress. So this one is isn't finished yet. Um, Can you come closer to that one? Yep. Is it all acrylic paint there? What's all, the paint? No. Yeah, it's all acrylic paint. Um, there's also markers. I use acrylic markers as well. Okay. So this area right here, that's marker. Yeah. Um, and I did some collage in here as well. So all of this is like is a uh, collage um, tracing paper uh, here and here. Um, but everything else is just, you know, it's just paint. Yeah, it's, I mean, the layers, right? You're working on layers. And like we said before, even in your installations, you have all these layers. Right. Um, and how many paintings do you work, uh, you think, at the same time? Um, usually I work on two or three at the same time. Okay. Uh, it's been a practice of mine for, for years and years now, um, where... Basically, you know, I try to, you know, work with a couple of different ideas in different ways. Um, yeah. and then sometimes I'll start working on something um, and that, that, that painting may or may not be working out for me at the time. So yeah. I'll put that aside and then I'll take like one or two ideas from that one and bring it over to another one, start another one. And a lot of times that second or third one will give me the answer to finishing exactly. up. Exactly. So one informs the other. And I do have to say that that plastic that you have behind, you should uh -huh. use it for your installation with the blue tape. Yeah. <laughs> I think the blue tape is very much part of your, your language. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've used it in the past to make collages and things of that nature. Um, yeah. And I do like the, you know, the, the bits and pieces of paint that are, Oh, the residue of making that's another thing that's that i'm fond of and that ties in again with um what i see you know in the world around me you know the residue of human life so on the plastic here you see the outlines of all the you know different yeah. things I've done and whatever yeah different marks yeah so this is all like a part of that as well um yeah. I just, you know but i don't always know what to do with it so i don't know sometimes i just reuse the, the tape and Send it my way, Tim. I, I, I'll use it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. Sure, sure. So there's a couple smaller ones. The yellow two over here, these are 16 by 20 or 20 by 16. Okay. These are um, uh, 14 by 11 uh, each. Um, this one I'm still, I feel like I'm still working on, but it's almost done. Uh, this one's finished. Oh, I love it. I love the the color palette um, and I know that you work usually for people that don't know you um, or your work you used to work a lot with monochromatic meaning black right. white gray right yeah. Yeah. Um, black, gray silver um, so for you know for since like 2013 2014 or so yeah um, I got into experimenting with uh yeah the bl black white and silver and i still and i still do work with it it's just that i've returned um you know more color uh, 
a larger color palette lately. Um, something that's different now actually is um, me using this dark background. This is um, something new for me. Uh, and that came out of like doing some drawings on black paper that I, uh, that I purchased not too long ago. And then I started like thinking about, oh, you know, why not try it on, uh, you know, in one of my paintings. And uh, so this is the result of that so far. So I'm, yeah, I'm I absolutely, I mean, I, I, I love the greenery in there because it's uh, almost like more nature wise compared hmm. to your urban looking one. So I, I like those marks that are more intentional. Um, you know, I feel like uh, even though that maybe all the other marks are still intentional, I think that uh, maybe the green, bringing the green in, it's calming everything down in a way. <laughs> no, maybe, you know. Um, I, I still have a love affair with, um, you know, with landscape and, and nature, greenery, because I do. Well, there you go. <laughs> I like be outside, being outside. So, you know, I, um, you know, my, my girlfriend and I will go on hikes, you know, in different places. Um, yeah. I enjoy being out in, uh, in nature a lot, so. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I, I absolutely uh, love uh, both those pieces. Now, can we move to the other wall that you have more stuff on? Um, sure. Yeah, that wall. So over here, um, so up on the wall are these, uh, what are this um, little bit of a series um, called Notes, where I made these pieces to almost look like they could have been like found paper, you know, found, uh, notes in the street or something like that and yeah you like you you're like getting that you it could be on the you know back to back to or something, and you're only seeing a part of it so you yeah. not get the full message or whatever and yeah. in, this, in this case you can't understand anything here so you know it, it's sort of i feel like it sort of adds to the mystery of it a little bit 100 percent. yeah you ripped it out and you brought it home <laughs> <laughs> exactly that's good that's, that's, uh, then down here I have some other pieces. So, so I've not like posted these or anything. And um, but what I do from time to time is I I like working on cardboard, and um, I, I I like it as a as a like a as a unprecious material. You know, um, I like that I can just you know mark it up, and you know it's it's impermanent. Um, I love the energy that that one has. It's um, I, I think that using the cardboard and using that as a as your base color also mm -hmm. gives it a whole different feeling to it. Right. You know, and yeah. the mark making and the absorption of the paint is very different than working on paper or canvas. Um, yeah. It's more rough, like you said. It feels mm -hmm. raw, actually. Right. It feels like um, you know people could step on it, and that would be okay. Yeah, um, totally. That's what I was kind of going for with these. You know, I I wanted something that you know maybe I could just take it, maybe even leave in the street, and someone would be like, "What? What is this?" You know what I mean? Because I come across so many things in the streets myself, with so many situations where I'm like, "Is that art, or what exactly is that?" Yeah, and. You know, if, if you ever do that, can you please um, put those on my street <laughs> so sure. I can find them on my street? <laughs> I'll fly. <laughs> so there's a few of these. Um, so, you know, it's a mix of, like, what I do in my paintings. You know, there's, uh, you know, there's collage. There's, you know, there's direct drawing. Um, and it's, you know, very similar to what I, what I do in my paintings. Um, and these, you know, these will also often also uh, inform what I'm doing in my paintings because um, I'll look, sometimes I'll get stuck on something. I'll look at this. I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, it will remind me of like where I might want to go with something. It's sort of yeah. like I, I look at them as like. It, it's so exciting, yeah, Tim. Your work is so exciting. Like, Thanks. like this is so empowering and uh you you it's just so creative and, and thank you it's just incredible work thank you i appreciate that um and i saw I, i'm thinking you know i've had it in the back of my mind i might do do i, I mean i will continue these and uh i'll probably make an uh, make a show out of them or something 
eventually. We'll see what happens. I, I think you absolutely have to. I mean, I think <laughs> they're brilliant. I love uh, the corrugated of it, um, that mm -hmm. you can see some of it, some of it is flat. Um, right. You know, and like I said, your language is very unique. And, um, you know, I wonder if you decipher what it really says. Um, if you don't, if you even know what it really says, you know what no, I mean? No, I mean, I, yeah, it's, 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 I mean, really, it's, you know, it's, it's just an expression. I just make them, you know what I mean? Um, I don't, I, like I say, I, I go into this, I don't have a plan. Um, all I know is like, I have this, you know, I have this, uh, this, this support, you know, and I want to, you know, fill it up somehow. That's, that's, that's pretty much where I start. Yeah. I think that, um, uh, do you have any of your prints there by any chance? Um, you know what? I didn't, uh, I forgot to bring them down. Okay. Um, um, but I guess if you go into Tim's, um, Instagram, you can find them there. So yeah. Um, so yeah. Go, yeah. Or yeah. if you go to my, um, yeah, if you go to my Instagram, um, you can find them in, in my feed, but also if you go to, um, there's a link for, um, a link tree in my uh, profile. If you click that, um, you'll find it down in the list of um, links there. Or go to my website. They're all on, right there on my website. So tell oh, us exactly. about your woodcuts and your prints because that's what yeah. they are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so that was... Um, Tim, if, that you know, was... if you want to put back the phone on the tripod so you can feel oh, okay. more comfortable or whatever you, whatever you yeah, want. Yeah, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Like, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, because I was going to show show you something on the on the laptop anyway. Yeah. But I have to. Oh, that's right. We have to yeah. go to your. Oh my God, let's do that right now before okay. we even talk about the woodcuts. Because. Well, yeah, uh, because I don't have the woodcuts, but you asked about them uh, yesterday. Yeah. And so I do have a photograph. Um, yeah. Of one of them here. And we're going to see some installations. So. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, I'll sh I'll show you the woodcut first. Okay. Uh, or the image of the woodcut, and then I'll go through um, sort of how like the installation work has come together over time um, from through different works. So let me get this up together, and let me turn this around. All right. So this is on my laptop. So can you see that? Yeah, well? perfect. I can so, see it perfect. Yeah. So this is one of the, this is an image of one of the woodcuts that um, I made the prints with. Um, so this was made um, with an electronic router that where I sent um, I sent the printer um, the uh, Alexis. I'm sorry, I was trying to remember <laughs> Alexis <laughs> Alexis Nutini. He's a master printer here in Philadelphia. Um, so we were collaborating, and this is one another one of the projects that um, that came up, you know, during the pandemic. Um, so I sent him the images. He inputted them. He put them into his computer, and then um, and then he you know hooked up the router to that. Um, and as you can see, you know it made all of the, you know, uh, it really makes perfect reproductions of my marks. Yeah, it's it's uh, it would, unbelievable that they yeah. can do that. It is truly incredible. Yeah, it would have taken me. It would. I still. I probably would still be working on this if I was carving <laughs> it myself. No um, kidding. And you wouldn't get it so perfect. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. No, it, it definitely would be something uh, something different. Um, so anyway, so we went and um, we collaborated on this project that was funded um, by the Brandon White Workshop here, which is a print workshop here in Philadelphia. Um, everybody should check them out, by the way. It's, um, it's, it's a gem here in Philadelphia. Um, so it was funded by them, and um, so we just went ahead and made a variable edition, um, and by variable edition meaning that we made 34 prints um, with. Can you show us? Uh, you know, hold on for a second. Uh, I don't have. Hold on for a second. If not, show us what you have planned, and then we can go back to. Okay. To your well, prints. Yeah, Whatever I'm gonna bring. Want. I'm gonna bring something up here real quick. Perfect. In that way. Uh, Tell us the name of of the printer again. Um, Alexis Nutini. Nutini. Yeah, N U um, N U T I N I. Okay. Nutini. Yeah. Good to know. <laughs> Do All they right, work so, nationwide too. What's that again? 
do they work with like nation one art artists or um he he'll work you know if they're you know he'll work with almost um anybody you know um he does uh so his studio is set up for uh, woodblock printing um mostly yeah mostly woodblock printing um okay so i brought it up on my website right. so i'm just gonna show you that real quick on my um yes please do yep while you do that, I'm going to take a little drink of yep. water. <laughs> so these are, um, this is the beginning here. I call them um, tomorrow's conversations. And so these are some of the variable edition prints. So what I mean by that is that they, um, there's not like one of 10 and they're all the same image or one of 34 in this case, um, and they're all the same image. Um, what we did is we experimented and we um, combined different blocks that I had. I have five different blocks and um, we mixed it. We basically like mixed and matched them, had different colors. Um, so. Tomorrow's conversation looked very, very promising, Tim. Thanks. <laughs> I, I love the color palette. I love the composition. I love yeah. that they are working together and um, I love to see them side by side. And I think we talked about all that and you know, yeah. just, you know, um, so I think that it sounds very promising to me and they nice. look very promising to me. Nice. Yeah, amazing. they turned out really well. Yes, really well. I like the color combination nice. and yeah, they look almost 3D. Yeah, well, that's part of my thing, you know, in terms of spacing and whatnot. And I do have a love of printmaking. I mean, that's where a lot of the, all the layering comes from. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the ways that I found of um, working with acrylic paints when I started working with them was, you know, in layers because they dry so fast. Um, I had to find ways of, you know, working with them. Um, and that, that was before I found out about um, mediums that can, you know, slow down the drying time of acrylics. Right. Uh, but uh, in the beginning, and then when I got to school, you know, when I w went back to school, you know, I really loved woodblock printing and lithography in particular. I really love lithography. I love the whole process of, you know, grinding the stone, um, going through the whole process of getting, you know, prepping the stone, the paper and the image and everything. Um, yeah. So um, it, all of it that. It took a long time compared to this one, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It took a long time. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah. Um, okay, can you show us some of your um, installations? Sure, sure. Let me let me go back to that real quick. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> Oops, that's not what I wanted. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're having fun, Tim. It doesn't matter. You take your time. All right, here we go. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go back to um, talking about the installation work and how that um, has progressed. So okay. if you look up here, I'm going to make these larger. So yeah. I had an opportunity. I've been working with the Bridget Mayer Gallery for about um, actually almost 18 years now, which is crazy to think about. We need to make them larger so we can. Yeah, I am. I'm going to do that right now. I'm just okay. uh, positioning myself. Right. Um, so this is, um, so anyway, I've been working with the Bridget Mayer Gallery for in here in Philadelphia for about 18 years or so. And um, in 2009, I had a solo exhibition there and that where I, um, I made two, I took over the whole gallery and I uh, made a painting installation um, in what was what they called the vault room. So the, the building where the, the gallery is used to um, house like a, a jewelry um, making place. So they stored, so I guess the vault was for like their precious you know, precious jewels, diamonds, and all that stuff. So um, in this space, it was a special project space in the gallery. So in doing it my- It almost looks like an outside wall. Yeah, it does, right? Yeah. <laughs> so over on the right-hand side there, that is like part of, um, that's part of like the door. The door is like, it's wide open. So that's like, you know, a rusty edge of the- um, Yeah, the exactly. Space. So anyway, um, I took over the whole gallery, uh, had paintings on the walls outside of this space. And then in this space, what I did over a period of like, I think it was like two weeks or so. So it almost became a performance in a way. 
um, I made the installation and people could come in uh, whenever I was there working. Uh, they could come in and see me working and see it in various stages. Um, so you never really, so like if you came there once or twice, you might not, you, you didn't get the whole experience. And again, this goes back to what I'm talking about in terms of um, seeing people's like uh, the, the residue of human life, but not really, you know, seeing the whole, knowing the whole story. Um, so if you came in during those couple of weeks when I was making this, you saw this in various stages. Um, and then you would come back and just see the end of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And this was the, the last, the, the, the final stage of it where I had covered the entire space. Amazing. I'm going to move on a little bit here. Um, yeah, please. To the next one. Let's see if I can. All right. It doesn't work that way. So I'm going to try it. I'm going to go back here. Yeah, no problem. So this is another view inside where, you know, I also like worked on the floor as well as on the walls. What what kind of materials did you use? Uh, acrylic paint. Okay. Is that marker or it was paint? No, no, it was paint. Paint. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. So, I, yes, yes. I spent a lot of time just making these, you know, like at this point in my, in my um, art making, I was making these paintings that were very much, that looked like this, that were big field paintings. So the whole surface of the painting will be covered in this sort of like lacy linked, uh, linked um, mark making. Yeah, it has this rhythm because it has that repetition. Mm -hmm. It almost feels like uh, you're floating in there. You're mm -hmm. like, you know, you're, you're being able to breathe at the same time. So, yeah, uh, so you know, by creating the same, um, the same formation, it's, mm -hmm. you're creating a rhythm. And right. so um, it, it just flows beautifully through right. it. Yeah, let's keep All right, going. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on kind of because we're, it looks like we're running, getting yeah. close on time here. So yeah, I'm going to go through real quick. Uh, and then in 20, 2013, I got to make, I had another show there, a solo show, and I got to make another painting on the wall. This is a mural. This was nine by 13 feet. Um, I oh, call wow. it um, We Dance to Pray. Um, and there's basically like three layers on the wall um, here. Wow. And this is in the gallery space in, um, at, um, on Warner Street in Philadelphia, the Bridge of Mayor Gallery. Wow. And again, very monochromatic. And mm -hmm. um, that's, more, that's the most like geometric that, I, that I've seen. The other mm -hmm. ones feel more organic. This one yeah. feels more geometrical to me. Yeah. So, yeah, back in the... Um, Back in the early 2000s, I was doing a lot more uh, geometric work. I mean, this was 2013. I sort yeah. of like went back to some of that work. But um, yeah. But yeah. Um, and then I had an opportunity. Um, this is at the Philadelphia International Airport. Wow. This is an installation that I did there. Um, they have a, a really robust um, uh, art program there. Um, it's run by Leah Douglas, who's the uh, director of um, experience, uh, exhibition experiences. I forget yeah. how they how they word it, but um, so I was invited to um, be one of like I think it was like six artists who did ceiling installations. So I worked on ceiling tiles here. What were they made of? Uh, just the the ceiling tile material. Okay. So and I worked wow. on it with, with acrylic paint and acrylic markers. I mean, people must have had a lot of accidents because they were just walking up <laughs> looking at not, the ceiling. Not, not that I've heard of yet, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I take no responsibility. <laughs> no responsibility. My God, that is mesmerizing. What a beautiful ceiling. Thanks. Oh, um, wow. And then uh, last year, um, there was a festival at one of the piers here called Tiny Room for Elephants. And um, so I was uh, one of the artists that the organization invited to make um, these huge murals there. Um, it wound up, it, you know, overall, it was a music and art festival that lasted like a week or so. Um, so I made this like large, um, this is a 12 by 12 foot uh, mural. Yeah, and there's a picture all... with you in it where you look yeah. really small. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So again, this is like a, um, um, you know, conglomeration of uh, mark making and um, as well as uh, collage. So, um, so when we talk about what non-objective art is, is mark making, 
-hmm. is um, having your own language, is having community of um, symbols and geometric shapes. Mm -hmm. um, it's having lines going vertical, horizontal, um, you know, any shape, way, or form that you would like. And I feel like uh, if you don't know anything about non-objective art, this is a perfect example uh, of what rhythm and repetition looks like. Uh, this is just a uh, shot of me working on it. Oh my God, unbelievable. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Let's see. I'm going to I'm going to run down the list here real quick. So one of the things I did um, before I made that is that I would I would make these drawings at home. So these are stencils and also drawing um, on tracing paper and whatnot. So I made a whole bunch of these and then took them there and then I would like, you know, do more when I got there. And that's been my um, my M.O. ever since. Yeah. So this is a, this is another space um, in a place called Pogan Pole, which is a kitchen design place. I'm not going through the whole story, but someone invited me to make an installation there because uh, they sold their demo kitchen. So they, so they were like, <laughs> "Do you want to make a? Do you want to hang some art?" And I said, "I have a better idea. Let me like make an installation." They were like, "Okay." So I did that. Um, this has so this was like a different one where it had a a 13 inch recess there. Um, so I had to find ways of dealing with that. Oh, wow. And they use the corner beautifully. <laughs> Thanks. And this is a, a shot of the whole piece uh, once it was done. Yeah, and you, I you love see all the um, different papers that you use and mm -hmm. just the um, layers and layers of it. Yeah. And so I'm going to skip down to um, the one I just did. Oh, I, I call this um, You Don't Know the Whole Thing. And uh, the reason why you didn't know the whole thing is because on the extreme right hand side, I hid this little painting behind uh, behind it. Oh my God, I love that! <laughs> it's a peekaboo moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then in Towson University, um, so this is the, this is the wall I was telling you about uh, that's yeah. three dimensional. I had to work on all four uh, all four sides here. So I started off with drawing. Uh, drawing on it. That must be so proud of you. Uh, and then, um, and then of course I did my whole layering thing where I added, you know, so there's clear acetate, there's stuff on the wall, there's paper and all sorts of things. Yeah. Um, there's more images of this on my, um, on my Instagram as well. I'm going to turn back on the comments. Um, okay. We have two more minutes to talk. Okay. So if you want to show us one more thing, and then if people have any questions, this will be the sure. time to ask. Um, um, so one of the things I do is I, um, I like walking around and taking photographs of like different things I see in the street. And I call them daily observations where I see like odd things like this happening, you know. Um, so okay. photography is another thing that helps me. It's like note taking, visual note taking. You know, I see things like this in the street. I'm like, that's a painting right there, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. So, yeah, exactly. So stuff like that happens. Um, yes. It's, you know what, you, you inform um, your artwork so well, and you articulate everything that you see outside and bring it into your studio. Thanks. And that is the epitome of what artists strive for, to have that connection with their artwork in a way that they can actually talk about it and communicate it and be able to really, um, you know, touch somebody else. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, I applaud you for that. You're an incredible artist, human being. Uh, like I said, a new friend to me and uh, <laughs> to all of you. And you're just getting so much love here. And I don't know if you want to say something uh, um, to finish this incredible interview. Um, yeah, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's been um, supporting me over the years. Um, it's just, it's really incredible. And I want to thank you, Sandra, for this, you know, inviting me to be a part of this project. Um, this has been great. And um, yeah, I just, yeah, I'm just glad to be here. <laughs> thank you so much, Tim. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. If you have any questions, as always, either send them to me or to Tim. And I will let you know where you can find his artwork. And please check him out. He's an amazing, amazing artist. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. See you soon. See you on Saturday. Bye-bye.